try not to think so much about the truly staggering amount of all that it takes to make a record. Hopefully we are all aware that we're living in the midst of a climate crisis, yet awareness doesn't always breed action. We keep being told that our lifestyles need to change if we have any hope of saving the planet, but it's really hard to change. It's so easy not to think about the environmental impact of every single action that we take. And even when we do, we're confronted by numbers, CO2 emissions, etc. So bafflingly large that they just don't register as anything meaningful. It's easy to think that as individuals, we are powerless in this situation. There's nothing we can do to change it. It's for governments, corporations, not for us. But like it or not, every single one of us is complicit in the system, which has caused so much damage to our environment. But look, I'm not here to preach, I'm not here to judge, because I'm guilty of exactly the same. Ever since I heard Father John Misty's Now I'm Learning to Love the War from his 2012 debut album, I've never been able to get those first two lines out of my head. Try not to think so much about the staggering amount of oil it takes to make a record. So I started wondering, how much oil does it take to make a record? And of course, there's many different aspects to this question. There's oil used in so many different stages of making the record. The electricity used to record the record. The transportation of the record. But what I became particularly interested in as an avid vinyl record collector was how much oil it takes to make one of these. So what is a vinyl record actually made of. Historically, records were made from shellac, which is a resin extracted from female lac bugs, and this became the standard at the end of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century for the old 78 RPM discs. The problem with shellac records was that they were really fragile. If you drop an old 78 RPM record, then it's basically going to shatter and there really isn't much that you can do about it. They also required larger grooves, which are the indentations in the record which store the sound waves. So they could only hold around four to five minutes of music on each side. So imagine how many discs you need for your favorite prog song. Instead, people figured out that if you made a record with vinyl, or polyvinyl chloride, better known as PVC, it could hold around 20 minutes of music, give or take, on each side of the record, and would be a lot more durable. Now, I'd hardly start using them as frisbees on the beach, or strap some C4 to them, but if you treat them right, they are going to treat you well for a long time. But before we return to our original question and look at how much oil it takes to make a record, it might not be a bad idea to familiarise ourselves with the manufacturing process. How do you make a vinyl record in the first place? Step 1. Get an aluminium disc coated in acetate lacquer, a similar substance to nail polish. Then feed the master recording in with a heated diamond stylus. Step 2. Once the lacquer disc is grooved, clean the surface using distilled water and softly brush it with a soapy solution to remove any grease. Then spray it with tinned chloride and liquid silver. Step 3. Add a duller metal to the silver side to stiffen the disc. Step 4. Peel the metal away from the lacquer and you will have the mother copy, which is used to make a stamper from which all pressings will originate. Step 5. Place the stamper in a hydraulic press, then allow the PVC in the form of black pellets to be melted and sandwiched to the mother disc. Cut off the excess, put on the centre sticker, and voila, you have your vinyl record. Well, that doesn't seem too hard, I guess. To answer our question, we've got to look a bit closer into what actually goes into the making of a vinyl record. 
quick disclaimer of why I did try and find the most accurate sources for all of the information and figures that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. Uh, this information is not always the most transparent. Some of these things are industry secrets, so occasionally I've had to use some industry estimates instead, but all of my sources are in the description box below if you want to check them out. The average modern record is around 180 grams, at least I haven't seen many modern presses which don't claim that golden 180 gram status. As we talked about earlier, modern vinyl is made of PVC, but actually only around 97-98% to 98 of the weight of the vinyl record is actually PVC, and that equates to around 175 grams of the record. The other 5 grams are plasticizers, lubricants, and most importantly additives, especially carbon black, which gives the record its classic black finish. Carbon black also helps lower the noise floor of the record. That's why vinyl purists tend to prefer plain black releases to the fancy picture discs and colours presses. That's why they insult you when you post that picture on your Instagram of that oh so limited Joy Division picture disc on your brand new Crossley player. Okay, that's interesting all, but where's the oil? What is in this 175 grams of PVC? Well, PVC is pretty much made of two things, and that is oil and salt. It's 57% chlorine, which comes from industrial salt, so it's not something you really want to be putting on your fish and chips. And it's 43% carbon, which comes from the compound ethylene, which mostly comes from oil or natural gas, though generally it's more commonly processed from oil. Okay, so now we have 43% of this record made from ethylene, which comes from oil, but that doesn't quite answer our question. I want to know how much crude oil it takes to make a record. In terms of the unrefined barrels that we use for petrols, plastics, and pretty much everything else, to really answer Father John Misty's concerns of exactly how much oil it takes to make a record. So to find out, we've got to dive into some maths. So brace yourself. To make one ton of PVC, it takes around 0.63 tons of crude oil from industry estimates. The reason it takes less oil than we get PVC is because PVC is, as we discussed before, also made of salt. This means for a 180 gram record with 175 grams of PVC, it takes around 110.25 grams of crude oil to make the 43% of the oil derived past the record. Now, you may wonder why the crude oil amount is so much higher than the finished oil amount, since we have 110.25 grams of crude oil and only 75 grams of oil in the record. And that's because, well, crude oil needs to be refined, processed, and these things don't work at 100% efficiency. So there we have it. It takes 110.25 grams of crude oil to make a record. But what does that actually look like in terms of the record industry and the mass production of vinyl? In 2019, the US sold 18.4 million records, and the UK also sold 4.3 million vinyl records, which equals 23.14 million vinyl records across the two. I'm also interested in what impact does that amount of records have on the environment? And how much oil does it take for the vinyl record industry to make 23.14 million records for these two countries? Using our previous calculations, the 23.14 million records sold in the UK slash US last year would need 2.54 million kilograms or 2,545 tons of oil to actually produce the vinyl. So let's try and put that figure in context. So the UK consumes around 569 million barrels of oil a year, according to estimates. Now, we've been using tons as our unit of measurement here, and while barrel sizes can fluctuate generally in size and quantity, the industry tends to say that around seven barrels are equivalent to one ton of oil. So, using that metric, we get the figure of 81,285,714 tonnes of oil being used in the UK every year. This means that our 2,545 tonnes of crude oil involved in the production of vinyl for the UK and US is equivalent to roughly 0.0031% of the UK's total oil usage. 
After all of this, you might be a bit underwhelmed by that number, thinking, well, if that's all the oil that's involved in the US and UK production of vinyl, then clearly that brand new 180 gram press in a Fleetwood Max rumors ain't gonna have that much of an environmental impact. But there's other ways of presenting this data. Carbon offsetting is a reduction in emissions of CO2 to compensate for emissions made elsewhere. So what would it take to offset the vinyl record manufacturing industry? Well, the carbon footprint for one kilogram of PVC is approximately 4.1 kilograms of CO2. And the weight of all those 23.14 million 180 gram presses is 4,049 tons. So pretty heavy. But this gives it a carbon footprint of 16,602.95 tons. For context, the EU emits 3.54 billion tons of CO2 a year, while the average UK citizen emits 8.34 tons per person per year. The record manufacturing industry's emissions are roughly equivalent to 2,000 people's net emissions per year. And to offset this at 15 trees per ton of CO2, which is the rate suggested by Australia's largest carbon offsetting company, this would mean a quarter of a million trees would need to be planted to offset the record manufacturing industry in the UK and US. Okay, so you sat through a bunch of numbers and maths about oil, oh, how exciting. But what can we actually conclude from all of this? Are we destroying our environment by continuing to produce vinyl records or is it just an insignificant drop in the ocean? If you do see these numbers as an insignificant part of the wider problem and you just wish that this long haired fella would stop trying to guilt you about buying your favorite records in 180 gram presses, let me just at least say one more thing. That the numbers I've given you aren't completely accurate. Since when you buy a vinyl record, you don't just get it like this. Because there's cardboard packaging. There's usually a paper or plastic in a sleeve. There's the cellophane film which seals the record. There's the transport and logistics to ship the record. There's also the toxicity of the chemicals in the records when not properly disposed of. Since PVC is not biodegradable, please don't just chuck it in the bin, not even the recycle bin. If you've got a record that's too worn and damaged to be sold or even given to a charity shop or thrift store, then please send it to a specialist or send a bunch of them to a specialist if you want them to be dealt with responsibly. But look, at the end of the day, I'm not trying to get you to burn your record collection. I mean, that would be really bad. No, since PVC can be recycled up to around seven times, and some record manufacturers are even using up to 30% recycled material in their records. Also, if a record is stored and kept properly, it should be able to last for around 100 years. There are also a bunch of forward-thinking companies who are trying to make the process that little bit greener. The Dutch manufacturer Syncom have devised a method using injection moulding techniques which is meant to use around 65% less energy than the traditional techniques to make a record. Or Deep Grooves who are using sustainable electricity and a calcium base to print records. I don't want to tell you to stop buying vinyl records. All I'd offer at the end of this is firstly to be conscious of the effect of your actions on the environment and our planet and to make informed decisions. And secondly, maybe instead of buying that luxury 180 gram brand new press of your favorite Pink Floyd record, maybe you could just settle with a second hand copy from 1973 and support your local record store in the process. As always, long live rock and roll.